Hi, it's Joseph Flahiff, and I want to give you a quick update on the training that you've registered for, for the uh, role of the manager in Agile organizations. Here's what we're going to be covering. I'll give you a little snapshot of that, and then uh, a little quick tip at the end here. Uh, the, the tip that I'll share with you at the end uh, is it's one of my favorites. Uh, I literally was sitting with a general manager at a corporation uh, talking about work and the business and things like that. And I shared with him this, this little protocol, and he literally got up from where we were sitting, ran over to his desk, grabbed a pencil, and wrote it down really fast because it was so easy, yet so powerful. Uh, he just he wanted to capture it right away, and you will too. So get a piece of paper and a pencil out or pen, and uh, let's go. But first, it's a little bit about the webinar that we'll be, we'll be uh, having on the 16th. Uh, this webinar is about the role of Agile managers, really specific to that, so that you can, as an Agile manager, be adding value, having purpose, and understanding your role and responsibilities once more. It used to be clear to us what the role was as a manager, what our role was as managers, and Agile came along and has changed a lot of those things. Uh, there's been a lot said in Agile. If you've had Agile training, you've probably heard what Agile managers are not supposed to do, not heard a lot about what Agile managers are supposed to do. And then you get into it and things get confusing and, uh, yeah, it gets very complicated as you get into being an Agile manager. And I've got over a decade of experience transforming organizations, and I want to share with you what I've found and how I'm looking at now as managers being central to the long-term agility of any organization. So at this webinar, I'm going to show you exactly how I structured the Agile manager systems in two multi-million dollar software companies. You'll see the ideas and the concepts of, of what the manager's role was and how they fit in, how they integrated with the teams. And you'll be able to implement things very practically right away when you get, when you get done with the webinar. If you're like most people who are interested in agility, you've probably been to webinars before. You've seen things about Agile, you've watched videos, and you've read books about them. And if you're like most folks, you've also been kind of disappointed in a lot of them because they're esoteric or they're, you know, all theory and no, no value. Well, as one of my clients said, yeah, it, speakers are often like professors. They're all theory and no practical experience. She was saying that as she was complimenting me that mine was not, that I was giving practical advice based on clearly based upon experience. That's what you're going to get at the webinar. This webinar is going to be different than other things that you've attended. First, won't be talking simplistic theory, right? Simplistic and untested theory. I will be balancing, though, principles with practical real world, real world guidance, right? I like to give you the, the practical and the principles. If you don't understand the principles, you won't be able to adapt when you need to in your organization because, surprise, surprise, every organization is different. And so exactly what I tell you won't necessarily be the way you can implement it in your organization. You need to understand the principles that underlie it. And so I share principles extensively. As a matter of fact, the video that you'll get tomorrow is some foundational principles that you'll need to understand in order to have the webinar uh, on, on Thursday make sense. So be sure you watch the, the video that you'll get tomorrow from me. Secondly, this video, this, this webinar, sorry, is going to be specifically about being an Agile manager, working in a large company. And your struggles as an Agile manager, it is not for you if you're in a small company. If you're in a small company, you have different issues to deal with. It's also not for you if your organization is doing something like Holacracy, right, where they've done away with the role of the manager and replaced it with, a, with different processes. I, I know lots of folks who are in organizations that have, have done away with the manager role and distributed it amongst the, the team members and things like that. It's not This webinar is not for you if that's the direction you're organization has chosen to go. And this webinar isn't for you if you're not a manager. You're totally welcome to come. Actually, you know, anybody's welcome to come. If you're a small company or if you're doing away with it, you're welcome to come, but you won't be getting as much out of it as the folks who are large company managers in agile contexts. So 
we'll be talk we won't be talking about anything else. It's going to be specifically about you as the manager in a large company. If you are a manager in a large company, you're probably frustrated with what Agile says about your role. And if so, then this webinar is will be for you. If you're a manager and you're frustrated with what Agile doesn't say about your role, this webinar is for you. And if you're a manager in a company that's about to embark on an Agile transformation, please, this webinar is going to save you a lot of headaches. Please attend. And if you can't, at least sign up and watch the replay. So what's next? Well, the rest of this video, I want to share with you the the tool, the appreciation acceleration protocols, what I call it. Um, it'll improve your employee engagement, which is a huge factor in creativity, productivity. Um, it will improve engagement with one single question. One question, you can improve engagement for your entire team. And then tomorrow you're gonna to receive another video that'll cover some underlying principles that you need to understand in order to be ready for the webinar on Thursday. So without further ado, the Appreciation Acceleration Protocol. Here we go. You are a manager on the left here, and Jack on the right is one of your direct reports. You say, hey, Jack, who on the team has done something this week that you really appreciated or you thought was particularly helpful? Jack thinks for a minute and goes, hmm, well, oh, yeah, Julia did an awesome job on the landing page. It was really creative design. Cool, you say to Jack. Would you mind if I shared, shared that with her? <laughs> Not at all. That'd be great. Because Jack's an introvert and he didn't want to share it. But he thought it was great. But he just didn't, wasn't, you know, he hadn't planned on saying anything about it. So then you go to Julia and you're having a talk with her just casually in the lunchroom or grabbing coffee. Hey, Julia, I was talking with Jack and he said you came up with a remarkably creative landing page. Nice work. And Julia is flattered. Wow, thanks, she says. And now she feels appreciated. And so you ask her, hey, Julia, I was wondering if there's anybody on the team who's done something this week that you really appreciated or that you thought was helpful. And you have just then completed that simply have completed the appreciation acceleration protocol. Now, it's so simple. But what you've done here is you've built a three way bond by asking one question and then conveying the answer to the other person. You built a bond between Julia and Jack because Julia now knows that Jack appreciated her work. That's so cool. You know how good it feels when somebody gives you a compliment. You're glowing for the rest of the day. At least I am. I love it. And you've built a bond between yourself and Julia. As the manager, she knows that you are aware of her work and you appreciate it. You wouldn't, share, you wouldn't have shared that with her if you didn't appreciate the work she had done. So you feel great that, or she feels great that you appreciate her work. So cool. And Jack appreciates you and you appreciate Jack because Jack didn't have to go through the work of finding Julia and sharing that with her. He may have appreciated her. He may have done it if he happened to bump into her, but he didn't have to go out of his way to do it. You were able to do it for him and he appreciates that. So that's it. Super simple. Did you write it down? Who on the team has done something this week that you really appreciated or you thought was helpful? It's great. It's a great protocol because it acts like a snowball. I usually say, who are a couple of people who have done something interesting or, or that you appreciate on the team? Because then you'll get two names and then you can go to those two people and get two names from them. And you can go to those four people and get two names from each of them. Now you've got eight names, right? So you're snowballing this thing very rapidly you'll cover everyone on the team. Now, if you you have to keep track, as a manager, you should know that. You're building up the rapport, you're building up the morale, you're building up the engagement of the team, but you should be keeping track of who you have appreciated and who has shared appreciations with whom so that you can then find the people who maybe aren't getting appreciated and dig a little deeper, right? Instead of just saying who on the team, you might actually go so far as to say, hey, um, what has Suzanne done on, on the team that you've really appreciated recently? Asking people on the team. You can't be everywhere and you shouldn't have to be. Use this protocol to appreciate your entire team and bind them together in a cohesive group. All right, that's it. I want to remind you once again, mark your calendar, February 16th, 
11 o'clock Pacific time, 2 o'clock Eastern, we will be talking about the role of the manager in Agile manager in large organizations. All right. See you there. Bye-bye.